When the Lewis and Clark expedition traveled up the Missouri, they documented a wild, untamed river. Their famous diaries contain stories of Native American encounters, escaping grizzly bears, and many descriptions of wildlife. Deer, elk, and bison are the highlights, but beavers are the forgotten heroes. To the expedition, beavers were a source of food and commerce, but the diaries tell a different story. The entries describe lush riparian habitat along the 2,000 miles of the Missouri River Valley. They observed beavers in their natural habitat shaping the world around them as powerful ecosystem engineers. Within a few decades, those beavers were gone. Trappers and fur companies nearly wiped them out. Lewis and Clark weren't directly responsible for the decline, but their records allow us to see what the Missouri and its tributaries looked like at the dawn of the 19th century. Lewis and Clark often mentioned hunting beavers, but they also described the animal's environment. One of those entries was April 10, 1805. Meriwether Lewis described a section of the Missouri in North Dakota as follows, quote, The river bottoms we have passed today are wider and possess more timber than usual. The current of the Missouri is but moderate, at least not greater than that of the Ohio in high tide. Its banks are falling in but little. The navigation is therefore comparatively, with its lower portion, easy and safe." Unquote. The land Lewis described was likely lush, green forest created in part by beaver power. The clever rodents cut down trees and used them to build shelters. Beaver dams create habitat for other species and help the landscape store water. The surface pressure forces water into the underground aquifers that help trees tolerate drought periods. The 21st century Missouri is a straight and narrow channel, but historically, it was a long, meandering river. Beavers likely had more influence on smaller streams that fed into the Missouri, but their dams played an important role in shaping the Missouri River Basin. Every time a beaver dammed a stream, its flow weakened. The dams eventually collected sediment and raised the water level. They forced water to change course and flow in a slightly different direction. It's more complex as you can imagine, but this basic series of events helped shape the fertile forest and prairies Lewis, Clark, and other early American explorers ogled at. A few days later, on April 16th, Lewis remarked that beavers were very abundant and he saw the rodents fell trees up to 20 inches in diameter. Those fallen trees were a building block of the riverine environment. In the same entry, Lewis observed that beavers only ate the bark of cottonwoods and willows. Beavers actually eat the cambium, which is the layer of a tree underneath the bark, but Lewis was close enough. On April 19th, he wrote, quote, the beaver of this part of the Missouri are larger, fatter, and more abundant and better clad with fur than those of any other part of the country that I have yet seen. Lewis also mentioned that they ate nice, fatty beavers along the way. A lot of these beavers were trapped. Like many other trappers, the expedition used scent to lure the rodents to their death. If you have ever been curious what these lures smelled like, Here's a recipe from Lewis. They mixed castor, a smelly goo beavers excrete, with nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon, and allspice. I haven't experienced it personally, but castor supposedly smells like musky vanilla. If the expedition used apples, the beavers would have been lured in by a really nice apple cider. Later that summer, Lewis visited the headwaters of the Missouri River in modern-day Madison County, Montana. There, he named one of the rivers Jefferson after President Thomas Jefferson, another after future President James Madison, and the third after Treasury Secretary Albert Gallantine. They combined to form the Missouri at present-day Missouri River State Park. On August 2nd, Lewis noted that beavers had built many large dams along the Jefferson River. The next day, he described one of them as follows. Quote, we saw some very large beaver dams today in the bottom of the river, several of which were five feet high 
and overflowed several acres of land. These dams are formed of willow brush, mud, and gravel, and are so closely interwoven that they resist the water perfectly. The base of this work is thick and raises nearly perpendicular on the lower side, while the upper side, or that within the dam, is gently sloped. The brush appears to be laid in no regular order, yet acquires a strength by the irregularity with which they are placed by the beaver that it would puzzle the ingenuity of man to give them." Unquote. One of the other men on the expedition described the environment created by these dams. Quote, Some trees, newly cut down by them, saw ponds where they dammed up the water, one dam above another, which is curious to behold. Past a high bank in which villages of banks of swallows, past large, beautiful bottom prairies on each side, and bottoms of timber." Unquote. Over the next few decades, as beavers were killed off, these meadows dried up. Scientists have demonstrated how critical beavers are to the riverine environment. One study found that without beavers, quote, river corridors can transform from wet, multi-threaded channels, wetland systems housing a diversity of plants and animals, to a dry, single-threaded, incised channel representative of a drier, steady state known as elk grassland, unquote. Beaver removal fundamentally changed the geography of the U.S. The Lewis and Clark expedition painted a vibrant picture of the western U.S. The reports spread far and wide, and many people began streaming west in Lewis and Clark's footsteps. Over the next few decades, beavers were quickly wiped out across the west, and our landscapes were changed forever. There is a growing movement to re-establish beavers wherever possible, so hopefully we can bring back the landscapes of Lewis and Clark. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to help grow the channel.